Adobe Firefly has been released, and this is a brand new AI art tool that comes to the table directly from Adobe themselves, who are probably trying to compete against the likes of Midjourney, as well as OpenAI and DALI2. Now, I'm interested to see exactly what makes Firefly different than the competition, and I've got access to the private beta, so let's find out right now. I'll start here on Google, and I'm just gonna search up Adobe Firefly. The very first link takes you to the AI art tool. You will need an Adobe account to be able to properly sign in, but once you do, you can ask to join the beta. It'll take you to the landing page for Adobe, and from there, you can actually select to request access here at the top right, where you can fill out a form to get early access to the beta. I've been not so patiently waiting for this, but I finally got in, and I'm really excited to try out some of these features. I think I'm gonna try out this text effect first, simply because it's something that I couldn't get working on mid-journey. So let's see if Adobe AI or Adobe's Firefly can actually do this quite effectively. So here, let's see, we've got a little prompt. We're excited to introduce to you to Adobe Firefly. Uh, let's select next. It's gonna copy some of my training data, I suppose. Uh, there's a user guideline, which I'm sure nobody will read. And there are some limitations. So Firefly doesn't support uploading or exporting video content just yet, I assume. And you can't use Firefly to edit or iterate your own artwork just yet. But I'm guessing they're working on adding this in too. Finally, Adobe Firefly is for non-commercial use while it's in beta. So just be aware that you shouldn't be using this for work just yet, but it should give you an idea of what you'll be able to once it is finally released. And I'm sure there'll be a dollar sign attached to that as well. All right, so here I've got some uh, letters, I suppose. We've got Ks and Ns and Ws, but uh, for each hover effect, we've got a try prompt. And here at the bottom, which is kind of hidden, is the prompt generator. So we've got enter text and describe the text effect that you want. So what I did in a previous video was try to get a letter T um, and I wanted it to have nice grassy greeny looks. I'm going to say T just as the letter and maybe add something like a nice grass life-like look. Eco-friendly with lots of plants and shrubs growing around. I think that's a good prompt. I'm gonna select to generate that. So here it's already recognized that I want the letter T. That's probably because I've got the text effect there. Um, it is, there we go, it's actually generated it. So I can see here there is four different variations that I can select from immediately. It's just generating each one of those. I'm guessing this here on the bottom is the, the preview that you have. They're like small, low resolution previews. And then this is the upscale, which is also transparent. Now that's cool. Now on the top right here, there's also sample effects, text effects, and fonts that you can select. And you can also change the background color and the text color. Um, but that's pretty cool already. I'm gonna select a view all for the text styles. And I think I'll pick something like maybe this flowers one. So here, oh, it's basically done a change for my prompt here at the bottom and said pink Hawaiian flowers and leaves realistic. So what's happening here is that the actual sample effects are pre-made prompts that you can select from. Then you've got text effect fill. So something like tight, medium, or loose. I'm gonna select loose um, because I like when the shrubbery and the content sort of expands out of the letter. Whereas if it's a tight fit, sometimes it just doesn't look that great. Now in this case, what it's done is it's tried to add these flowers almost like a pattern overlay. Personally, I don't really like that. I'm gonna select the second option here from the thumbnails. And I think this one will probably look a little, yeah, I think this one looks better, but it's not really the style I would go for. So I'm gonna actually go back and see if I can select the one that I had earlier. Uh, I'm gonna select back, forward, forward. So there is version control here. You can actually go back and forward from your changes. Uh, and I'm going to stick with this eco-friendly life T, but I'm going to change the font here to Popar, I think it is. Um, I wonder if they've got Helvatica in here. They do not, but they have Times New Roman. So actually, I'll do Times New Roman because I know that's a common one. Uh, and then I think I might even change the background here to be black. So let me do that. And then I'll select the second option, which I liked last time. And I think this could work, let me see. 
yeah, that's not too bad, to be honest. Uh, then I want to save this. So there are three buttons here. You can submit to the Firefly Gallery, copy to clipboard, report, and there is the button here to download. So promoting transparency in AI. Adobe is committed to promote transparency around AI, which is cool. Uh, content credentials will be included. So Adobe will include content credentials with the generation of all AI generated content. So that's good to know, I suppose. Uh, so let me click continue on that. It applies the content credentials and downloads uh, the JPG. And here's the high fidelity version. That's pretty good. Uh, we do have this marker here on the bottom right. Uh, this image is not for commercial use. So I might not be able to use this on my own website just yet, but it'll be cool if I can in the future. So the next thing I wanna do is try more than one letter. I'm gonna select here at the bottom. I'm gonna select typography and that's filled out quite nicely. I'm gonna select the loose fit and I'm gonna select one of the fonts that is a little bit thicker because I think that way the shrubbery does look like it's using more of characters themselves. So I've got that nice letter T. Um, it looks like the two letter P's have identified that they're the same letter P. So it just repeats that design that it's populated. But generally I really like this word topography. That actually has come out as quite a nice design. I should be able to select a transparent background. I'm gonna select to download and let me see if this gives me a very nice transparent background because if it does, it is, it's a PNG. And there, that's actually quite high resolution. Wow, I could, um, I could use this in a website. I might try, I might actually put this on the Editor X website I'm building. It's quite high resolution, so it's five megabytes. That means that if you wanna do some of your own compression, then you'd probably have to do that in Photoshop, but at least they're providing the most highest quality image that you can use. I think I would prefer this over Midjourney anytime. With that done, let me now go back and try something different. There are other variations here, which are kind of cool, like this cheesy popcorn letter P, and it comes with a prompt, which is just called cheese popcorn and the word firefly. So I could change this to something like Adrian, and now I'm a cheesy popcorn text, which I think this actually is kind of cool because not only does it already come with some pre-made prompts that you can immediately use, these also look kind of 3D. It just makes it easy to generate these and download them. So I'm actually excited to see how this plays a part in future designs because I can definitely see myself using many of these styles or even just browsing through them. This is something that maybe uh, Mid Journey just doesn't do very well. Give you inspiration like this, you do need to sort of jump into the Mid Journey website and then you have to jump back into Discord. Whereas Firefly is just giving you all of this in one go and immediately the prompt interface to generate these right below. All right, let me move back here to the home page and try out the next thing, text to image. This, I guess, will be the closest to something like a mid journey. And there's a few examples already here that I could use. So scrolling here to the, there's no top. It just keeps scrolling and I keep scrolling down. Wow, infinite scroll both up and down. That's pretty funny. Um, now here are some example prompts like a dog in a sweater. Uh, or a small seed sprouted from the edge of a mountain of Mars Dawn Deep Valley in background art. I like this one here, uh, so I'm gonna select it. So it just fills out the prompt for me rather than me having to manually do this. But there's also a tag here called art. So I'm interested to see what these tags do. So here on the top right, I've got what I think are the tags. So I've got art selected, but I could select photo and I'm guessing this will give me a completely different design or art style. Uh, let's see what pops up. On top of that, I've got aspect ratio. So we can do landscape, portrait, square or widescreen. Personally, I prefer widescreen. So this looks more like a photo realistic image. Uh, there's also graphic, which I guess might be something like SVGs or just, uh, I suppose, clip art. I guess I'll find out very soon. Uh, and there's also other things here too. So this, yeah, it doesn't look as photorealistic. It looks more um, graphic-y. Uh, so let's have a look at these ones here, digital art. I'm gonna select and add that on top. So it's adding this as a tag, um, but I haven't really seen any differences. I might have to select a generate again. It's not gonna automatically change that. 
But then there's also options here like tone. So I'm gonna select maybe muted colors, uh, the lighting, golden hour, and the composition shot from below. Uh, let's see what that does. Adding all these tags in, I'll generate this piece of art once more. And generally speaking, this runs much faster than Mid Journey. Normally with Mid Journey, I'm pausing constantly to showcase how long it takes. It normally takes up to 20, 30 seconds. And this is only taking five seconds or so to generate four instances. Uh, so I like this one over here, I'll select it. It's already upscaled, so I should be able to download this, select it. It's uh, adding these tags, which I actually wanna find out how this works into Photoshop soon. And here it is, so that looks pretty good. I could use this as a wallpaper or part of a website with a hero image. So I think I'm pretty impressed with just the general text to image that is popping up, but let me see if I can make my own. So for my own here, I'm gonna do something like maybe a, a mobile application, UI, UX, uh, about shoes. This is something that I've done a video in the past on using a mid journey. And I'll be interested to see what Firefly does in terms of this. So, wow, that's different. That's definitely much more like a graphical art. Now I have selected art here as the option. So maybe that's why, but it looks like someone holding a phone and it is definitely like an app for shoes. Uh, maybe if I do, instead of mobile application, I'll write in here a uh, website. So let me actually try that, uh, a website design. And I think last time I wrote in a beautiful. So let's add in a beautiful website design, UI UX about shoes. Give that a shot. Uh, and then I'll wanna see how it does. Um, so not, not that great. If I was gonna say doing web design inspirational art, Mid Journey probably wins here because while these look kind of like someone's attempted to do a website design, they more look like clip art that you would traditionally have. And I guess that's the difference. It's probably trained on clip art rather than specifically web design. So let me try something different. Let me try an e envelope icon for a website navigation. And I think what's gonna happen this time around is I'll probably get something that works a lot better. Yeah, so this definitely looks much better in terms of what I could use for a mobile application or an icon. These icons look more like they're minimalist as well as they're something that I could put into the menu of a website. Whereas with Mid Journey, it overdoes them. It's almost photorealistic. But then maybe this is because I've selected the art option here on the content type. Let me select a photo and see if we get the same or different types of styles here for the graphics. So here it just, I suppose, looks cleaner. Personally, I like the photo version a lot more, but in terms of actually creating an icon as an envelope, technically speaking, this is again performing better than Mid Journey. Let me try out another text to image, this time maybe one of my own design. So a motorbike flying through space at maximum velocity, breaking the sound barrier while passing the sun. Okay. So that's a pretty cool image right there. Let's see that last one that gets generated. Wow, okay. So all of those images are pretty cool. Uh, I can then do something like a synth wave version. So let me apply that. Still really cool, but I kind of prefer the original one. Let me also try digital art to see what it comes up with. So digital art looks more or less the same as what I had before, but personally I liked it without any of these styles. Let me also, instead of doing art, let me select a photo and see what that comes up with. The photorealistic ones don't look as stylish, so let me try also the graphic. I kind of like the graphic ones, they're pretty cool. And how about none? I wonder what that'll produce. So none looks very stereotypical, but yes, I think art actually does produce the best results when creating some of these content. So we've got blurry background, close up, wide angle, narrow depth of field. Let me try narrow depth of field and see how that impacts the styling of this design. So it seems to have just styled the background a little bit differently. Uh, how about if I do wide angle? I'm really liking the fact that we can add tags in. I think if more tags were produced and you can do more with them, that'll be pretty cool too. 
So this one almost looks like he's behind a black hole. That's pretty awesome. Uh, but let me finally select one here that I'm going to use for the thumbnail of this video. I'm going to select a widescreen and hopefully I can plug this in, put on a really nice colored shirt that matches this design and that will be the thumbnail for this video. Ooh, yeah, I definitely like all of these. So I'll have to pick one. Uh, maybe I'll pick this one just over here and I'll select to download it. Adobe Firefly doesn't just do text to text or text to image. It also does recolors of vectors, as well as many, many more features, which are probably currently in the works, such as in painting. So I'm guessing this will allow me to use a brush tool similar to Photoshop, as well as doing text to vector, which I think will be awesome, especially for vector art. There's things like extend image and 3D to image and text to pattern. And all of these will be features that will slowly be released. But I can see that this might be an entire product that might compete with Photoshop or even be implemented as part of Photoshop and might make the next generation of building websites really cool. I'm looking forward to testing this out as it slowly gets released. Personally, I think Adobe Firefly has something here. The interface and its ease of use definitely opens this up to a lot of people, making sure that they don't have to jump into Discord to be able to use it. But I don't like the fact that the search bar is sort of hiding and floating on the bottom of the website. That's some UI that I definitely think they could improve. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.